So the question for today, what does it really take to split a five meter Ford block? Can you do it with nitrous? How about a roots blower? Maybe a centrifugal blower? Surely you can do it with a turbo. What does it actually take to split that block? The internet tells us that a factory five liter production block splits right in half and throws itself on the ground at 500 horsepower. The reality is the internet isn't always accurate. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about my own personal combination that made over 500 horsepower for 85,000 miles. Then I'm going to show you nine different combinations that I ran on the engine dyno where we made over 500 horsepower. Some of them way over 500 horsepower. And these weren't one hit wonders. A lot of these motors have hundreds of runs at this power level over 500 horsepower and they didn't split. At the end of this video, I'm going to talk to you about the one time that I did manage to split one of these blocks and what happened and it wasn't on the dyno. So make sure to stick around. But before we get to the test, here's what I want you to do. Let me know in the comments. What do you guys think? What splits these blocks? Is it a horsepower number like over 500 horsepower? Is it actually a torque number like over 500 foot pounds? Is it sustained running at an elevated power or torque level? Is it a shock load, you know, like when we drag race a car, especially a stick car, and instantaneously load this thing? Is it detonation? Is it a frequency? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Make sure to make the comments. Let's check out our test results. Before we get to our results, here's what makes me think it's not a specific power that splits a block, or even power over time. In my own personal 302, it had a forged piston, it had trick flow high port heads, it had that crane version of the extreme energy cam and a GT40 intake at the time. I also had a Vortex supercharger. Now, I ran the Silver State in this Mustang 12 years in a row. A couple of the beginning ones were NA, but then eventually I put a Vortex supercharger on there and ran it flat out at wide open throttle in one of the races for 32 minutes straight before I actually had to lift off and go through the narrows, which was a curvy section posted for 45 miles an hour, so I couldn't go flat out through those. But for the majority of the beginning of that race, for 32 minutes straight, I was at wide open throttle. So this motor made about 430 or 440 at the tire back in the day, which is over 500 horsepower at the flywheel. I wasn't running a lot of boost because we had to run it for 90 miles, <laughs> 92 miles flat out. So I didn't go crazy on it, but I did run it for that long at wide open throttle. So I would think if it's a power level thing, if this thing was making over 500 horsepower, surely, it's not the power thing. And it's also not a power applied over time because, I mean, how many guys run at wide open throttle at that kind of power level for 30 minutes straight? Not very many. So let me know what you think it is. Let's check out our results. To illustrate that the 500 horsepower number, which is kind of an arbitrary thing, isn't the actual splitting point for these five liter blocks. I've run a ton and I've never broken one on the dyno. So I want to show you a whole bunch of different combinations where we exceeded that magical 500 horsepower number and nothing happened to the block. Now, admittedly, you know, doing it on the dyno was a lot easier than actually doing it out drag racing. In fact, that's the only time that I've ever seen anybody actually split a block is when we did a turbo combination with the guys from HP Performance. And that was the only time that I've ever seen one actually split. So I want to show you a bunch of combinations here. We're going to go through them a lot faster than normal and show you where we made over 500 horsepower and, and actually <laughs> nothing happened. And we made, you know, a lot of runs at that power level. So this stuff works pretty well. But our first combination was a 302. It was a stock bottom end from the guys at Marshall. So it was just basically a rebuilt motor. I put the Extreme Energy 274 cam in it. It had blueprint uh, as cast aluminum heads on it. It had a trick flow street burner intake manifold, the EFI upper and lower. And we ran it NA to begin with with long tube headers and stuff. And this thing made 385 horsepower and torque was at 374 foot pounds. Here's what happened when we added a Nitrous Express fogger nozzle to it, an EFI basically nitrous kit. The nitrous kit had a 5228 jet combination in it, so and, and the 
peak the spike numbers were 540 horsepower and 526 foot pounds of torque but this thing was over 500 for a, a fair you know bit of the time and this was the f starting point for <laughs> all these combinations that made over the 500 horsepower number and, and obviously on this case over 500 foot pounds as well and we ran this probably four or five different times with the nitrous without any problem and it just goes to show you that you can do it <laughs> without splitting the block so let's get to our next combination combination number three was a an explorer short block a five liter explorer with the that same camshaft <laughs> that we used seem to use in everything a set of 11r heads and then that this cam version came from trick flow so from trick flow and crane and comp they all make a very similar deal so this thing had the 11r heads on it it had a funnel web intake and a, and a carburetor on it headers and stuff this thing did good it made 415 horsepower and then we added nitrous to it this was a Zex perimeter plate, and this was a you know pretty healthy shot on. It. I think that this was a 125 shot, and this so this thing was over 500 horsepower for the whole run basically after the nitrous activation. It made 530 horsepower and made over 500 from you know 53 or 5400 RPM all the way out past 6500 RPM. So again, we made a few runs on this thing running the nitrous at various different levels, and again, no problem. I mean it's. <laughs> I'm beginning to think maybe it's not a power thing. Let's get to our next combination. Here's another combination where we easily exceeded the 500 horsepower mark. This was the, one of the same combinations that I ran nitrous on. It was the Blueprint engine uh, 302, you know, Marshall engine, basically a stock 302 combination. Had an aluminum head on it uh, from Blueprint. Yeah, our, two, our 224-232 cam, it had a TFS street burner intake, so it was an EFI combination, long tube headers, and this thing made 386 horsepower, 374 foot-pounds of torque, but on this one I added a single turbo, the GT45, you know, <laughs> DNA GT45 clone with an air to water intercooler, we only ran less than 8 pounds on this thing, but as you can see, not only did it make... Um, good power made right at 550 horsepower it made over 550 foot pounds of torque and was kind of hovering right around that 550 mark for quite a ways you can see the flat flat kind of torque curve but it was over 500 foot pounds from 3900 all the way out to basically 6000 and we made a number of runs at different boost levels on this thing and they were you know pretty easily over 500 horsepower so even with a turbo which is different than the nitrous thing the nitrous is kind of instantaneous and the turbo is, I think, a little bit smoother in the power delivery, but has more torque through a broader range of the curve. So is it torque? Is it power? <laughs> what is it? Let's get to our next combination. Another way to increase the power output of the production 302 block is to step up in displacement, which we did. I've got a th couple of uh, 347 tests here. This is a 347 with Promax heads. It had the Comp XFI stroker cam in it. And it was this was a carbureted combination with a Victor Jr. and we were running nitrous on it. So this thing made 441 horsepower, 405 foot-pounds of torque, and here's what happened after we added 150 shot to it. See, now we're up over 600 horsepower, so we're getting, getting a little bit more serious. 610 horsepower, peak torque checked in at 574 during the spike but was over 500 you know and, and over 5, 550 and then over 500 through most of the curve so again 600 horsepower on nitrous and you know the block is fine let's take a look at our next combo we're getting serious this was test was run on another 302 actually it was a 306 it was a 30 over 302 it had a forged piston in it a forged rod stock crank and stock block obviously had an rhs cnc head on it i think it was a 210 or a 215 had the extreme energy 274 cam in it it also had a ported an extrude hone ported holly system axe intake and a 75 millimeter throttle body headers this thing did good um especially since it was only a 302 made 395 horsepower and 380 foot pounds of torque so here's what happened after we added a single turbo and running a little over 10 pounds at the power peak it was an intercooled deal this thing made some serious power 622 horsepower torque was up there pretty good at 637 foot pounds of torque as you can see though over 600 foot pounds for a long ways here 
and and always over 550 foot pounds <laughs> so again on these turbo motors we're making some fairly serious torque um got a good peak number that's you know in the near 625 nothing's broken yet so this was an interesting test this was a, another 302 with a stock block and stuff and it had um an edelbrock head and an edelbrock intake manifold and this was an rpm air gap 750 carburetor so it's kind of simple carbureted combination it made 392 horsepower and 386 foot pounds of torque and then i ran all of the different forms of force induction on i think that there's another video up about this but i want to show you that they basically were all over 500 horsepower and this thing probably had and the, the other thing i want to talk about is the fact that i'm showing you these runs and a lot of guys will probably make comments and say, yeah, but that's just one or two runs. That's not what hurts it. Some of these test motors might have two or 300 pulls on them because I, I don't just put a motor together and make four or five pulls on it and call it good. These test motors stay there, and I run them over and over and over again. So on a lot of these test motors, I'll run <laughs> a turbo. I'll run a centrifugal blower. We'll run nitrous. You know, we'll run roots blowers or twin screw blowers or all kinds of stuff. So they get they get the heck beat out of them, and they got a ton of poles, and they survive all of this stuff. And I think a dyno is easier than drag racing, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But um, these things are these things are not treated well. So here's our NA combination, but we ran a, uh, a roots blower, like a 174 Wyan blower, and that thing made 533 horsepower and 512 foot-pounds torque, and that's about eight pounds of boost. Here's what happened when we ran a Paxton supercharger on it. That was so over 620 horsepower, 622 horsepower. So I'll, I'll get rid of those so that it doesn't get too complicated. Here's what happened when we ran a turbo. As we were comparing turbos and blowers and different things. And this thing was right at 600 horsepower, 590, 599 horsepower. And torque was 617 foot-pounds. So again, all of these things way over the five, the magic 500 number. As a matter of fact, a couple of them over 600 horsepower. So it just goes to show you, I don't think that the 500 number is really <laughs> block-splitting territory. Let's get to our next one. Uh, here's some proof once again that we reuse these motors uh, time and time again. And this was the uh, Explorer 5 liter short block. And this was on loan from me from uh, Mark Sanchez, my good buddy up there. This was the Explorer with the 224-232 cam, the 11R heads. Had a trick flow upper and lower intake manifold on. We ran an EFI. This thing made over 400 horsepower, made 407 horsepower and 397 foot-pounds of torque and we added a torque storm supercharger with an air to water intercooler on it running about 10 pounds of boost this thing did well 638 horsepower and torque was up near 550 foot-pounds so 545 foot-pounds of torque you know above 500 foot-pounds from 4,300 all the way out to 6,300 RPM. So again, good power and good torque way over the 500 horsepower number on this torque storm deal. And, you know, it's <laughs> I don't think 500 horsepower really is the number. Let's get to our next combination. Our final test is run on another 347 stroker, stock block and, stock and cast crank, forged rods and forged pistons, had a set of RHS CNC ported heads on it, it had the XFI cam and an, an Edelbrock RPM2 intake with a 75 millimeter throttle body and headers. It produced 449 horsepower and 420 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what happened after we added a Vortec S-Trim supercharger to it. Running about eight, eight and a half pounds. We made 665 horsepower. And the only reason we didn't make more than that, because I <laughs> I didn't put a large enough injector in it to go beyond that, even though we jacked the static fuel pressure up. So I should have put a bigger injector on this. test was run long ago, but I would have kept going. I, I'm sure that this thing was on its way to go into 700 horsepower. And we probably had, I think we had 22 or 23 runs with the blower on it in this kind of combination, um, you know, getting to the point where we were tuning it and making everything right. So it made a lot of pulls like this. And again, no block splitting, even at this power level, lots of power production there above 550 foot pounds, 665 horsepower. So where did these blocks split at? 
After talking to you about my own personal supercharged Mustang and running in the Silver State wide open throttle for 32 minutes straight at over 500 horsepower, and then running all those dyno tests on all these motors that made five, six, and 665 horsepower, let's talk about the one time that I actually did split a block. And actually, it wasn't me. I was working with my buddy Jimmy at HP Performance, and we were doing a test for then Muscle Mustangs and Fast Forwards magazine. So what we did was they had a turbo kit because HP Performance sold five liter turbo kits, which were really good ones. We did a bunch of testing on them. But what we did was took a stock motor, a stock five liter motor, and ran a turbo on it. We then modified the motor with heads cam and intake and ran the turbo at the same boost to kind of demonstrate what kind of power gains you get NA and what kind of power gains you get after you make the modifications. So it was a cool test. But along the way, what they did was take this car out, they put the turbo on it and ran it at the drag strip, and the thing ran tens with a stock motor and just boost, which was awesome. Then we made the upgrades. We put the heads, cam, and intake manifold on it, and you know, aluminum heads. Uh, I think we put a Holly System X intake and the, and the ever popular Extreme Energy 274 camshaft in it, and we went out and tried to run it again at the drag strip. Unfortunately, while they were running that car, while they were testing it on the street, they managed to split the block in half. Now, this wasn't a shock load thing, because I don't think that they were even at the drag strip with slicks yet. I'm sure that that car would have run nines, and the thing was making about 600 at the tire because they ran it on their chassis dyno before they took it out and were testing it, and made over 700 foot-pounds of torque. So again, what do you guys think it is? Is it the 600 horsepower at the wheel number? Is it the 720 or 30 foot-pounds that it made? Is it the like instantaneous shock load? What do you guys think it is? Because this is the only time I've ever been involved in one where a block actually split in half. And I'm not super convinced. I don't know what it is because they had another five liter motor that they ran in a drag car and it was a stick car and it was a single turbo deal with a modified stock short block 302 and it had, you know, Victor heads and a, a Cobra intake and an E cam in it with a turbo and it made 600 at the tires and it would easily go out and run tens. It, as a matter of fact, it would go out and run 10 O's. They were trying to get into the nines with it. That Now they kept breaking transmission and not the block. So let me know what it is. Why do some of them work and some of them don't? Is it production tolerances in the block? Is it abuse? Is it detonation? Let me know what you guys think. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More testing coming up.